we're going to now look at uh, tweeting a little bit more and tweeting in the modern way, which is the use of emoji. Did I mention emoji last time with Google Plus? Yeah. So here I think it's much more effective because the demographic overall of Twitter seems to skew younger. So if you're looking for a younger audience, Twitter will seem to be a better uh, platform. Google Plus, in contrast, seems to work better geared toward men or people that are a little more tech savvy. So let me actually make a note here. Google Plus skews toward, I'm not saying you can't find every audience here, but skews toward male tech, uh, you know, techie. Uh, Twitter is all genders, but younger, younger audience. Well, we, uh, we were not really going to get a chance to get to it, but I'll tell you, Pinterest, that one uh, seems to skew toward a female audience. So if you're trying to reach a female audience, Pinterest. Um, uh, LinkedIn, quote unquote, older. So to contrast Twitter and LinkedIn, I'm just using those terms, but you know, younger, older. Um, Instagram would be one that we talk about. Uh, that one is also younger. Uh, what well, we would talk about in part two, that is. Um, and then uh, we'll talk about Facebook next week. And I want to say on that one, everyone. Which is good and bad. You could reach a potentially very large audience on Facebook, but you could be a needle in a haystack on Facebook. So those are, those are some networks there, and these are not rules that will always apply. You will definitely, like I said, be able to reach an audience in any of these networks if you use all of the techniques to your full advantage. You may be focusing on a male audience in Pinterest and you will find a male audience, but it's skewing toward female. You may be wanting to reach an older professional demographic on Instagram. You will be able to, but it skews younger. So you'll be able to reach any of these, you'll just have to try, perhaps, a little bit harder. Um, you can always look up and keep up to date with many social networks. If you were in my other class, you heard this, but make a note of socialmediaexaminer.com. Socialmediaexaminer.com is a blog about social media. I'm not going to go too far into it at the moment. We've got a lot to talk about with Twitter. But this is a website, this is a blog, where you can keep up to date with everything, social media-wise. Let's see what the latest is. Google Plus changes, what marketers need to know, published today. Hey, we talked about Google Plus last week. Has something changed since last week? Maybe. But here's what's changed. How to build a better target audience for your Facebook ads. We'll talk about Facebook next week. 14 video tools for social media marketers. So video ads, that's a whole new world uh, to explore that your competition might not be using. Uh, YouTube or native video, you know, we can add video directly to Twitter or we can upload a video to, f to YouTube and then tweet about it. Uh, five ways to improve your social media results, etc. So lots of great hands-on interesting up-to-date information on uh, socialmediaexaminer.com and they even have a conference the social media marketing world in San Diego so that one is gonna happen they're already advertising for the next year a lot of great a lot of great presenters Guy Kawasaki for example he's a big name in social media etc etc lots of great people right here in our backyard in San Diego and if you register early you, you save well how much does it cost click here to register only nine hundred and seventy seven dollars a ticket five hundred and twenty dollars savings 
Or everyone, you know, you see <laughs> exactly. Someone goes in a little bit, then you come out and you pass the pa right. the badge back and forth. <laughs> you're gonna be you're gonna be married today, but that's okay. You're gonna get good information. Uh, so these conferences, there's many conferences out there on a bunch of things. There are conferences on on coding and programming and social media and marketing and, and uh, SEO and everything, and they're all pretty expensive, <laughs> oftentimes, but pretty useful because you can. Uh, learn a lot. There's conferences, guest speakers, programming and such. Obviously pretty expensive, but close enough, visit the website. And there's many other such websites. I'll mention this one briefly. You should check it out. Back to Twitter. I'm going to click back on the home button. You'll always have a button to tweet at the top right, but notice also you'll have a tweet button when you're on home. So what's happening? That's the same as if I click up on the tweet button at the top right, that if I'm on the home screen and I click inside of what's happening, <coughs> same sort of thing. And so notice I've added a little bit of simple text on a previous tweet. Let's get a little more advanced because I could say, okay, this is Victor's Bakery. I'm going to say check out our... Um, custom, customized birthday cakes. And I want to show those birthday cakes. I can add media. I can add pictures and video and such. For practice, because you can, uh, you can delete the tweet, I'll show you how in a moment, I'm going to click media. Notice this says um, add photo or video. Uh, video, I believe we're limited to less than a minute. It might be it might be 30 seconds, but we can't put in a five-minute video here at the moment. We can upload our, our longer videos to YouTube and then share them via Twitter, as we'll see. But here I'm just going to add some basic pictures. Notice at the moment, my tweet, I have 99 characters left. I'm going to add media. And there's some pictures that we can borrow just to see how this works. On our computers here, when you add media, you can go on the left side here, you'll find pictures. If you don't see it, scroll all the way to the top on the left panel. Pictures, and we've got sample pictures. I'm going to attach a picture, these penguins. So that picture is going to be attached to my tweet. You notice it dropped down to 75. Mathematicians, 99 minus 75. 24. 24? I'll take your word for it. 99 minus 75. 24, yes. Okay, 24 characters were taken for that picture. So, hmm, that's a little annoying. Now I have less space to write. But here's the cool thing. I can still add three more pictures, and those three more pictures will not decrease the count. Yeah. I'm going to add two more pictures. I'm going to add four pictures, and I can't add any more. I can add four pictures, and all four of them take up those 24 characters. So it's like a little gallery of four pictures. If I add a video, it will also take, I believe, the 24 characters, even if it's 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds long. Um, they're in the works. They might change this. Twitter's changing all the time in order to be better. Um, they are probably eventually going to change it so that when you add hashtags and maybe even pictures, it will not decrease your, your Twitter account. At the moment, it's not like that yet, but they have the power to do that, and they're beta testing it, to my knowledge. So check out our customized birthday cakes. I showed some pictures. One of the best ways to interact on Twitter is visually adding pictures in addition to your text, adding video in addition to your text. But also a little extra thing is add a question, which is your favorite. A question would entice people to answer, especially if it's an interesting picture and interesting questions. 
if these pictures are of other people on Twitter, you can tag them. Who's in these photos? You can tag them and add their name. And you don't need to be connected with the person, actually. Let's say here I'm posting pictures of my different bakers, the people back in the, in the kitchen. I took a group photo. And I'm saying, who's in these? Who's in this picture? Well, Victor's in this picture, and Janet is in this picture, and Bill is in this picture. So I've I've attached. Let's see, 51 characters. I'm going to attach a name. That doesn't take your character count. And so I can say, well, Victor's in this picture, and Janet is in this picture. I'm going to tweet that. And so that tweet goes out. I get an interesting looking gallery like that, perhaps different size pictures and that sort of thing. That's going to stand out possibly to my zero followers. That's uh, going to maybe entice people to see it um, and to perform one of the, one of the uh, four actions like we saw in Google+, but we'll get to that. Uh, I've, I've tweeted this. Whoops, I saw I made a mistake here. That's not how you spell favorite. Well, the thing about tweets are you cannot edit them. If you tweet something, it's out there in the world. You can't edit it. But you can delete tweets and try again. That's fine. Notice on any tweet, especially my own, there's going to be these three little dots. If you click the dots of any tweet, but let's say my tweet right here, when I click on the dots of my tweet, I have different options, and one of them is delete tweet. I don't have edit tweet. Um, in the beginning, when I was first using Twitter, that was annoying to me. I didn't like that I couldn't go back and edit my tweet. I posted something amazing, but then misspelling made me seem less amazing. So. In the beginning, that was annoying to me. Now, I live with it. I know that that's part of Twitter, part of Twitter's character, part of Twitter's differentiator, because I can go back and edit my stuff on Google+, and I can go back and edit it on Facebook and most every other network. Twitter is one of the few that you can't edit your original tweets, and I think that's interesting. It sets it apart from the rest. That, of course, could be very annoying, because you spent this time crafting that perfect tweet, and you messed up on it, and you have to do it again or live with it. But some other actions that I have on those buttons there, share via direct message, if I've got connections, if I've got followers and such, I can sort of send this tweet directly to a person. It doesn't make too much sense for my own tweet, but let's say I find someone else's tweet that's amazing, like that one there. I can choose to share that via direct message. I can send this tweet to specific people in a private way. On my tweets, I can do that. I can also copy the link to a tweet. Every single tweet out there actually has its own web address. That's its web address. I believe this number is a sequential number of tweets from the beginning of Twitter. Let's see. 100, 1,000, million, billion, trillion, quadrillion. Six quadrillion tweets. And if you tweet one right now, you'll have one higher number than me. Um, other options that I have here embed tweet. Um, this one is kind of specialized. Have you ever visited a website like a news blog? And they have, it looks like a screenshot, it looks like a copy of a tweet, and it's in the article. Yeah. That's this, the embed tweet. But it's not just a picture or a copy of the tweet, it's live. 
because when someone then replies to that tweet, it automatically also updates on the website. If someone favorites it, retweets it, etc., that travels over to the, um, the place where it's embedded. This is going to give you some code. It's going to look like this. And then you copy and paste that into your blog, your website, and then it will show like that. And when someone replies or retweets or favorites, that will show up automatically on the page where you embedded it. The cool thing about that is it has right built in a follow button. So if someone is on Twitter, they visit your blog, they read a post, they see that follow button, they can more easily click to follow you, they're going to follow you on Twitter. As you use Twitter, you're going to start to put lots of tweets out there into the world. Richard over here has 14,900 tweets. Uh, Mei Lin has 4,562 tweets. You can always go back and, and look at people, people's tweets. Um, Questlove has uh, 1,765. So you can always scroll back and look at older tweets. But what if there's a tweet that you published that you thought was really good and you want more people to see it? That's what the option here is. Pin to your profile. When someone visits your profile, the newest tweet is going to push down the older tweet obviously. But what if I really wanted to set up my Twitter to be the number one tweet that appears when people visit my profile? I can pin it. This will replace any previous pinned tweet. So you can only have one at a time. I'll say pin. Now when someone visits my profile, the very first tweet that they'll see is that one. And it'll show there it's pinned. So what if I have a tweet that says use this coupon 10% off and you don't want it to get lost. I can pin it and it'll always be the first one. <coughs> I can only have one pinned tweet at a time, however. And that's okay. When I add a new one, it'll replace the old one. and then delete to tweet. I don't have edit tweet, just delete and I can try again. As I've been talking, apparently I have another notification up here. Hopefully not another spam bot, but let's see what I got here notified. Kevin Callahan liked your tweet. Cool. Perhaps very good tweet. Uh, very good person. I can always hover my, my mouse over get their bio, growth at Twitter, former owner of at Menchies and product at Wattpad, serial entrepreneur, huge supporter of at Ryerson U and at IV IVAMB. 4,000 tweets, following 575 accounts, 10,000 followers. <coughs> So for whatever reason, this tweet that appeared, Kevin saw it, his search bot saw it, his notification saw it, and then what he did is one of these tactics that we'll talk about, which is make yourself aware, uh, make yourself be known, that is. I know now Kevin exists because he favorited my tweet. By reading this bio, he seems interesting. He's, he's an entrepreneur, this and that. I could click that follow button and now I'm going to see his tweets. Maybe I don't want to follow yet. Maybe that bio is not enough information for me. You can always click the tweets to view all his tweets. Is this spam? I can see in my own tweets. It just seems like automatically there that like something is going out. I don't think this guy really is spam. I just think that he is has a filter to check when someone is new on Twitter. Because I tweeted the tweet that says, I'm setting up my Twitter. So he has a filter that saw that. A spammer would be that he says, please follow me, like the other one that we blocked. This one just gave me a favorite. 
which is a notification that, hey, I exist. I'm checking out his profile, I'm reading what he's about, um, and from what I'm seeing, he seems to be a real person tweeting about real things, so then I could decide, okay, interesting, I will... I, I like that he's writing here about this. I could give him a favorite also, so did 10 other people. I could do a retweet, I could do a reply. When we do it together, this is one of the tactics to interact with random people in a respectful way, because then I could get you uh, favorites, replies, retweets, or the ultimate goal, a follow. He has 10,000 followers. He probably is tweeting about interesting things. And so he's got nearly 11,000 followers. We're still feeling around how Twitter works, but this tactic that he did is a good one. Yes? Um, are you able to use both media and also poll in the same post? So if you wanted to use a photo to kind of describe the poll that you're doing? Notice that if I add a picture first, I can't do a poll. Um, if I add poll first, I can add choices, and then I can't add a picture. So it's, I, it's sort of either or, unfortunately. I would like a picture to delineate this. But let me say this. The Twitter poll, uh, the Twitter poll system is okay, but there's another one that I like better. It's a separate app, because on this one you can attach pictures and such and share it on Twitter. It's called, um, what's it called? With straw, straw There's an app. Oh, Yeah, these guys. Uh, Pollwithstraw.com, but it's basically an app. It connects with Twitter and such. And then you can do these kinds of polls. You can put pictures, and it looks nice and organized. Um, Windows, Mac, I mean, uh, iPhone, Android, etc. I'm look. I'm I'm getting it right now. I'm trying to find it. Um, it's. Um, it's kind of a generic name, it's Straw, but on Twitter they're Poll with Straw, and on their website, Poll with Straw. So basically, Poll with Straw. I like their polls better than Twitter. These guys were around before the Twitter polls. We'll see the Twitter polls in a moment. They're kind of basic, but I like these better because you can add a different picture for each option, um, set duration of the length of the poll, um, and other cool features. You can send these polls to your friends via text messages. You can't do that on Twitter. They have to have a Twitter account to vote. On this one, you can send it to people's text messages and they can they can vote without having an account. So this could be useful, for example, um, you know, if you're a company trying to get um, answers for a question. What kind of cake should we bake this month? Pecan, raisin, oatmeal, vanilla. And then people could respond to that and guide you. So that little tangent, when uh, when you're tweeting something, you can choose pictures. You can also um, choose video if you upload a video here. Um, you have the option of a poll. If I click poll, I can add different choices, up to four. Which is your favorite type of cookie? 
chocolate, uh, oatmeal, pecan, Sugar cookie. Well, it's uh, it's a bit basic compared to the other app, Poll with Straw. I like that one better. But here, at least, we have a quick way to do polls. This, if I if I've got a few followers that care about my Twitter account because I'm this bakery account, this might be something interesting for them to to reply to. And that's what they'll see there. If you guys want to vote on this right now. Um, on your address bar, go to this address, twitter.com slash Victor's Bakery. Capitalization doesn't matter. And I've got two underscores right there. So if you guys want to check out my Twitter account that I'm using right now, twitter.com slash Victor's underscore underscore Bakery. And you'll see my poll there. You can then click to vote. And then it'll show up live on my account. On Twitter, the polls. You could. Any way you want to do it, you can use your web, the main tab, or open a new tab, whatever you'd like. There we go. So I've gotten two votes so far: oatmeal and pecan. You. So these last only 24 hours. Poll with straw. You can make them last a month, up to a month to get more feedback. But um, this is another way to build interaction because do you want your social media to be a dialogue or a monologue? Do you want it that you're just always publishing something to your users all the time, not really taking them into account? Monologue. Or do you want a dialogue, something back and forth, replies, feedback, etc. Oatmeal is winning. Oatmeal is awesome. Hmm. <laughs> Question? Can I just in that just put Victor's underscore twice? Yes, up on the top, twitter.com slash victors underscore underscore, two underscores, bakery. All right, so anyway, um, the, that's a couple of media that I've attached there, pictures or polls. Video, let me show you video. Um, when we attach a video this way, we have to have the video handy. Sometimes, though, you don't have the video on your computer or whatever. Here's another way you can do it. If you go first to YouTube, for example, if you go to YouTube and then you search for how to bake a um, snickerdoodle, that's a cookie, how to make snickerdoodle. So someone uploaded this picture. Is there anything else and like the anything smell that you of fresh upload baked to bread or warm pie in the house Twitter, that opens sorry, hearts to YouTube, and eyes so white? By default, bakers can be and bakers are special to, to us at Bob's Red right Mill. It's why we offer so um, many premium whole this, grain flours. You see this much Dozens more of on just about Here's every all website all out there, a way to share on social media. Bones. That's not food in your hands, that's love. I'm Bob Moore, that's me on the package. Okay, hey so guys, there's this video. I want to share that on Twitter. Let's say it's my video. 
Let's say that I tweeted this or I shared this on YouTube and I want to tweet it. Or it could be someone else's video. I've got a share button below any video unless they turned it off. The default is that it's always on. <coughs> Under any video, I'm going to see share. Do you want to share this on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, Blogger, Reddit, Tumblr, Pinterest, etc., etc., etc.? So most websites have some way to share on social media. So very directly here, I'm seeing this video, and I'm clicking the tweet button, and it's automatically going to compose a tweet. It filled in the name of the video, for example, and it put the link to the video. Basically, I just needed the link to the video. But that share button often does this for you. And then it says, well, this came via YouTube. And this can be edited, of course. I don't care that it says it came from YouTube, obviously. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this so that it says, amazingly see. So people will see what I wrote here, the name of the video. I can edit that how I want. I can delete it, whatever I want. And that link to that video once I tweet, that will convert into a playable video on my Twitter. Tweet that. If someone visits my profile. And sees my tweet. It'll look like that. It'll have what I wrote, and then a preview of the video, which I can watch directly from the tweet. Hey guys, it's Rachel, and today we are making snickerdoodle cookies. That's a three-minute video. I can't You're going to need two and a half cups of flour, video. along with a teaspoon of baking soda, and a half teaspoon of salt, can't upload that one and a half cups Twitter. of sugar. One way around it is upload your video to a video site like YouTube, Vimeo, Dailymotion, etc., and then share it because almost every website nowadays has some share buttons. Social media is such a big deal nowadays that if your website doesn't have a share button, you're falling behind. Because you might have great blog posts and they're just stuck on your site. You want to let people have the ability for your blog post to share, to travel to their Facebook, to their Twitter, to their Pinterest, whatever they're on. That's free advertising for you. That's why this video has 211,000 views. <laughs> and so I don't have the ability to add location but it's not that useful from a computer because our computer doesn't really have location information but our phones do our tablets if you've got a device you can download the free Twitter app then you can tweet on the go so if I'm at my store on Main Street and I'm tweeting, uh, come one, come all today, free samples, I can attach the location. So then my followers will see a little pin. There's a location here. And if they tap to see, they'll see a map. And if they're nearby, they'll know how to come to my store. They may have been just virtual followers of me on Twitter. But if I attach a location, those virtual followers can then actually vi become physical followers that they can come to the location where I'm at but I can't do it here from from the website really because it's not going to be that accurate this computer doesn't have Wi-Fi it's gonna just give a generic kind of location perhaps it's gonna work best with um, being on a mobile device So what I would recommend is um, take my social media part two class, so it's this Friday, 
and then it'll be on evening time some other day, some other semester as well. Because in part two, I do a day there about YouTube. I, I talk about creating videos and uploading them and getting followers and views and such because that's going to be the way another avenue for you to get traffic through YouTube. It's a very popular social network. If you didn't think about it as a social network, it's a social network. It's also a search engine. Many times if you're looking for something on Google or Yahoo or Bing, how to tie a tie, you're gonna get directed anyway to a video on YouTube. So YouTube itself is a big search engine. And if you have how to set up a three-point lighting system, if I'm a photographer, and I do a 10-minute video on how to set up a three-point lighting system, I could be getting views to my video and links back to my website where I can sell my services or my products. So that's in the Social Media Part 2 class. Another aspect of multimedia that I can share from one network to the other is sound. <coughs> Video is YouTube. SoundCloud is sort of like the YouTube of audio. I can upload here the music I create, any interviews that I record, podcasts, um, and if I find the track, a sound, so I have an account here. You can find podcasts on that also? Yeah. I've got a podcast right here on SoundCloud about one of my hobbies is comics. You can post them, yes. You can you can publish podcasts and you can hear podcasts on SoundCloud. So uh, I have a podcast about my hobby, which is comics. Uh, and so here I've got a few episodes, uh, eight episodes so far. It's free. You can upload audio here and then get followers and traffic and all of that. And let's say there's this that there's this sound, this this um, episode. I have share. Every network nowadays has some kind of share. So if I have if I click share, again share it to Twitter. That pops open because I'm logged in, so this is why this is so easy. If I'm not logged in, it's going to ask you to log in first. But notice here, via SoundCloud, when I select to share something from SoundCloud, it's going to tweet it this way. Have you heard this? By at the Campos, it actually was smart enough to also add my Twitter name and the hashtag. We'll talk about hashtags very soon. The link to the the link to the um, to the sound they didn't, the, the they didn't but it it looks long but it's it's still not taking up all of that space it's still only using the 24 characters any address no matter if it's a hundred characters long will automatically shorten to those 24 I'm gonna tweet that I have that on on purpose. That was my notification. I just got mentioned on Twitter, one of my other accounts. So here on Twitter, that was tweeted. That tweet now has the sound embedded with a cool graphic, embedded right into the Twitter, right into the tweet. You can hear that half an hour long podcast right from the tweet. We'll talk about what hashtags and at mentions are in, in a moment, but the point of that is my tweet mentioned another account. This is my this is my personal account. You heard that, you heard my notification sound. And so the point of that is I've mentioned another account. This is a way to get more activity, more followers and such, because if you publish a tweet and mention the name of a, what's the term that they use, of, a, um, of an influencer or a connector, someone that has followers on Twitter, someone that has clout, someone that has some reach, that person could do, for example, a retweet 
and reach more people if I've only got 10 followers. But I mentioned another account that had 100 followers, and they liked my tweet. They could click that retweet, and it'll reach their 100 followers plus my 10 followers. Again, reaching more people. So anytime you tweet, we were so inspired today by at. So you, let's try this. Let's try a tweet. Let's start writing something. <coughs> and then the at symbol, which is the same symbol for your email, shift to at. And then you start typing, for example, um, Andrew. Zimmern, the chef. As you start typing at something, you'll get all of these all of these possibilities. Do you want to mention in your tweet Andrew Zimmern, Andrew Zilch, Andrew Zip, Andrew Zimmern? No, I want to mention Andrew Zimmern, the the famous chef. Uh, I don't know which one these is. Oh, it's this one, because he's got that little blue um, verified badge. He's got, he's been vetted by Twitter. They've checked that this is the real Andrew Zimmer. Because as I said earlier, anyone can create any account. And if someone claimed your name before you, that's going to take a lot away of, of your traffic. But if you created an account and you had to be, and you had to be the real victor, and you go through the Twitter verification process and get that verified badge, then that uh, traffic going to the other account will stop and they'll go to you because you're the real one. Unfortunately, the thing about getting this verified, it really doesn't happen except for big names. TV chefs, celebrities, the president, uh, you know, news anchors, um, you know, official colleges, official cities. So to get this verified badge for the little people, that's not that common unfortunately. You have to be a bit of a name, you have to have followers, and you have to have some fame and clout, and then you'll be verified. So I'm going to mention, we were so inspired today by Andrew Zimmern, that we, all, that we want to create the world's first Pork belly donut. So tweet that. Andrew got a notification, either on his phone or on the website up here. Victor's Bakery mentioned you. Now, when someone as famous as Andrew Zimmern, the chef who has 822,000 followers, most likely, he does not have the option turned on to let any tweet get his attention. Remember that I said over here on the settings, under web notifications, he probably has tailored for you. He's not gonna get tweet. He's not gonna get mentioned or bothered by just anyone in the world of his nearly one million followers. He'd be his phone would be blowing up all day long. People would be mentioning him all the time, and he wouldn't be able to get any work done. He'd slip and cut his finger on the knife. So the big names, most likely they have this option. Or maybe they don't even have these turned on. Don't let me get any notifications from all my 200,000 crazy fans. For us, because we're the little guys at the moment, it is useful to get these notifications by anyone. And yes, it could be any crazy person. But Oftentimes, I found I've never really had that much negativity happening on Twitter. Especially if you're putting out positivity, you're gonna get negative. You're gonna get positivity. If you put out negativity, you're gonna get negativity. So I may never get any result from this. That's okay. Perhaps someone that follows Andrew Zimmer found my post, and they have their own 500 followers. And then they reply to my tweet and say, ah, that's pretty funny. Or they can retweet it, and it goes off to their 500 followers. Or they can favorite. By Google+, Plus, we have the ability to favorite. You click a favorite, you get a cute animation. 
that number goes up. So here, Richard got that notification. Victor's Bakery favorited your your tweet. It's like a like, like a plus one. Let me jump down over here somewhere. Rachel Ray, New Year's in New York City decorations. I'm going to click there. Rachel Ray might have gotten that notification. The next level up. Um, could be the retweet or the reply because if someone replies, I wish they would add the the statistic. It shows you how many favorites, how many retweets. It doesn't tell you how many replies. They should add that. You won't see that until you actually click, and then it opens up, and it shows. Okay, Tammy replied. Let's say if I click a reply over here, Twitter food it pops open. That one doesn't have any replies. But um, when you reply, it automatically fills in the names of the people that are mentioned or attached to that tweet. So Johnny Buzini would get the notification, Twitter food would get the notification, and ABC Network. Any one of these could then retweet my tweet, favorite a tweet, re further reply to get the conversation going further, being social on social media. No, they will. They will see it because it's still public. The only way other people cannot see it is if you do it through message. If you choose the direct message, then only those people will see it. Whatever you mention the person. Is it correct? Yes, it does it does stand out because notice here J Jen and Gav, they replied, and I can see what they replied. They're part of this conversation. Okay. So then I could um, I could reply right here, Jen is saying, I'm not liking the American version. So I could reply to that, this is letting me know what it is, what I want some. I can reply to that, I can favorite, I can retweet. I can start interacting with you because that's what I want. I could interact with them. If I add my own message here, someone else then can see my tweet and then interact and then reply, favorite, etc. Or the highest level, follow. Follow. Favorites are nice, but they're disposable, just like plus ones, just what, just like likes. You click favorite, you move on. What's next? Favorite that, move on. What's next? A higher level is that someone took the, the time to reply and maybe something meaningful or interesting. That's good. That means someone's interested. Christine seems to care about baking and stuff. I could start to comment with her or Jen. Um, the next level, another level higher, is also the re retweet because right there she has 152 followers I have zero Christine has 135 I have zero so if at least one of these uh, people retweeted something of mine that's could potentially reach 135 people whereas I have zero so I'm gonna try that to a random person Maybe I'm never going to get a reply from Johnny Luzini because he's got 31,000 people. He might not be paying attention. But on some of the little people, like Jen maybe, I'll click reply on that. So Jen, notice her, her, her name is Jen, at Gav, Jen and Gav. But her Twitter name is at Mary Jen. Only one person in the world can have that. So every other Jennifer that wanted that name, too bad. She has it. But anyone in the world can create Jen and Gav, a thousand of them. That full name can be anything, spaces, special characters, exclamation points, numbers, whatever. This one was the one that was 15 characters long and had limitations. So I'm going to reply, and it's going to reply and notify Mary Jen Johnny Luzini, Twitter Food, and ABC Network. I don't want them all to be notified. I can change that. But I only want Mary Jen to be notified. I want to start a conversation with her. I'm going to say, yeah, 
some or I'm gonna say oftentimes the the imported stuff is changed too much. And because she's using emoji and I want to be cool and, and hip with emoji. Uh, did I talk about this last time? The website getemoji.com? Yeah. You can activate the emoji on your on your mobile device pretty easily, but I'm on the I'm on the web, uh, I'm on the website. I don't have emoji like on my keyboard here. Getemoji.com lets me copy and paste. So I'm gonna copy uh, sad cat and paste and tweet. So yes, I just tweeted to someone completely random, someone that is that I've never had any connection with. They don't know I exist, and I just tweeted something to a totally random person. This is something that I do recommend to do reach out to the random people, but not spam them. I'm talking about something that she cared about of a profile that we both cared about, that chef or whatever that was. So that's one of the biggest tactics I can say. Interact with random people related to a topic that you care about. Use the big name, the one that's got 10,000 followers, 1 million followers. But check who replied to one of those tweets. Let me jump around over here to someone else. Rosanna Pancino. She's got 187,000 followers. I'm going to click. You can either click the icon or just an empty spot. Usually I click the empty spot. And this shows uh, Please Matt, Nana, Ari Kitty Kane, Lara Santos. People replied to that tweet. And so I can um, interact with them. <coughs> My tweet to them might get a favorite, which is kind of like a pat on the head. I could get a reply, which is good because it then would seem that they're interested in, in, in chatting with me. I could get maybe better yet a, a retweet. So Nana, if Nana retweeted me, could reach 27 people. Please Matt could reach uh, 220 people. Laura Santos could reach seven people, so that could further reach more people. Or maybe the interaction goes so well that Laura Santos went to my profile and clicked follow. So now I've got a captive audience. When I tweet something, a poll, a picture, whatever, or a coupon, a link to buy now when I have this captive audience so they could follow through. The more followers I have, the more possibility I have um, more possibility to to get people to follow through. For example, Patrick Stewart, um, he has his name like that, but his Twitter name is Sir Pat Stu. Someone else had a Patrick Stewart, not the actor, and that's okay. Twitter's not going to take away someone's Twitter account to give it to famous actor Patrick Stewart um, unless that other accounts kind of been abandoned. It looks like the big names, the big people can get a name that has been taken if it has not been used. If someone is legitimately using Patrick Stewart, Twitter's not going to take it away from them. And notice not everyone gets verified. Rachel Ray is a big name in the world of cooking, but she doesn't have the little verification. Oh yeah, she does right there. I guess they show it over here. Yes. So not everyone has got the verification badge, but this is the real Patrick Stewart, even if it's not at Patrick Stewart.
Let's take one more break, then we'll talk about hashtags, the importance of hashtags in search and trends. Uh, it's 8.10, we'll take a break until 8.20, and then we'll go on.